This is exactly right. How do you do that? You go like that in the middle fingers. Oh. And then you... <laughs> Hello. Hi. And welcome. To my favorite murder. The mini-sode. This is the mini version of the sode. This is the house. This is the steeple. <laughs> this is the church. This is the steeple. <laughs> Open the doors and see all the people writing in their own hometown murders to oh, our website. That was perfect. Thanks. Um, do you have a good one to end on? Yes. Okay. Can I go first then? Because mine's a little depressing. Always. <laughs> this is called Stalked by My Therapist Mother's Client. Stalked mm. by My Therapist Mother's Client. Let me read it to you. Great. Hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and all associated animals. <laughs> For HIPAA reasons, I have to leave some details a little vague. I love those stories. Yes, you know God. It's good. Even the the vaguest HIPAA story is, uh-huh. is the best story. Send us your vague HIPAA stories, please. Hey, doctors, nurses, yeah. and people restricted by the law to tell us things. Yeah. Please write in and tell us things. But then add an addendum of like, don't read this on the, on the air. And then like, just tell us the good details. We won't tell anyone. <laughs> That's right. Right? That's going to be... We'll um, shred them right out. We're going to put that behind a Stitcher paywall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the HIPAA Stitcher paywall. You guys love Stitcher paywalls, right? Right? We all do. Who doesn't? Okay. My mom is a licensed clinical social worker. Back when she was pregnant with me, she was working with a client who grew increasingly jealous of her impending addition. Oh. Me. Oh, no. Despite my mom already having one child, her client was insistent that my arrival would mean that my mom would abandon her client. No amount of reassurance would calm her fears, and she eventually began to threaten my family, forcing my mom to end all contact with her. I quickly became apparent that her solution to this problem would be to kidnap me so my mom wouldn't have any distractions keeping her from work. (laughs) Keeping her from one-hour therapy sessions once a week. Uh My mother had to keep the date and location of my birth a secret in order to keep me safe. How fucking bananas is that? It's uh, it's so awesome. You know, we were never in the white pages growing up because my mom was a psychiatric nurse. Oh, shit. She couldn't be in there so people could look you up and call you if they felt like it. And now we can't do it because we're podcasters. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, now I do it. Um, at the time, there was an influx of baby napping in my hometown. Oh. Wait, what? Can we hear more about that, please? Really? So everyone was on high alert already. I suppose this worked out well for us because we didn't have any issues for many years. Fast forward to my ninth birthday. We had since moved to a new state and had an unlisted phone number. On the day of my birthday, someone kept calling and asking for me by name, saying they wanted to wish me a happy birthday. Ooh. The first time they called, someone answered and handed the phone to me. The caller hung up right when I answered. Can I do my impression? Uh-huh. Hello? <laughs> Click. Bzz. Okay. Okay. Six or seven hang-up calls later, all answered by my parents and not their nine-year-old. Don't worry. My mom <laughs> grabbed the phone and said client name i know it's you stop calling the caller gasped hung up and never called again (laughs) moral of the story be nice to your therapists as they are often risking their own safety to help you thank you for all that you do m wow that's crazy that's intense but yeah i mean that's the that's the thing is that you know therapists are talking to and engaging with people in need and people who are need help handling the stuff that goes on in their life and after a while you're so grateful i mean i have that feeling about my therapist is like i don't like the fact that when i leave there's waiting there's someone else waiting to go in (laughs) seriously i it bums me out yeah because you're just you're just another one of them yeah it's just like it gives you that sense of like when you're in the room it's just like she loves my problems like you can tell yourself (laughs) anything she's so on my side she thinks i'm amazing and you walk out and you're like look at this loser and then you're just like oh yeah that's yeah i never think of that because my the office that i go to is kind of a big office so the waiting room is people that you might not know who they're there for Oh, you know what I mean? You, you know, should I, try that. I've seen <laughs> intentionally switch just so yeah. for the anonymity. Uh-huh. I've seen um, people I know coming out of the therapist's office so many times. Oh, yeah. It's happened to me a bunch of times. And one time it was my friend Stephanie where we both just started laughing. It doesn't we were, bother me at all. I, I just saw someone the other day. My only thing is I don't like seeing other people with a cry face. Oh, uh, see, I don't cry because I'm emotionally <laughs> broken. And so I never have a cry face coming out of therapy. My cry <laughs> face. try that. I look like... Um, I look like a kind of an off-brand Star Wars character or Star Trek character is more accurate <laughs> where my when I cry my eyes go bright like white blue with red Ew. and the red won't go away 
And then, of course, all my skin turns red. Yeah. Oh, you're <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's really intense. I do wonder if people see Vince and I coming out of therapy together. And I think that maybe I'm purposely trying to look cuddly with him and like happy and we have our arms around each other. So <gasps> and that's-, that's when they all go, oh, he must beat her senseless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send the uh, Hollywood Reporter over to Do it. to take pictures of you. I love it. Okay. The River's Edge. The subject line of this is The River's Edge, My Hometown Murder. Oh, my God. That movie's so good. Everyone watch it. Yes. Okay. So, hi, all. Your podcast gives me life. <laughs> all caps. In two earlier episodes, Karen mentioned the movie The River's Edge. That terribly acted movie is one of the bragging yes. rights of my hometown of Milpitas, California. Wow. I disagree that it's horribly acted. No. I think it was, the, it was the new verite, but it was very early on. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Um, okay. And I think the little boy on the bike that yes. we talked about, we've talked about extensively yeah. is one of the great child actors of all time. So Mil- deal with it. So thank you, whoever this is from. <laughs> Immediately contradicting <laughs> the poor person who's just trying to send in a hometown. Milpitas used to be a small town. To date, there is only one high school. To be fair, the high school has 2,600 students, but no crosstown rival. Thank you for being fair. Yeah, that is fair. Uh, It was very much a neighborhood where people knew their neighbors and gossip was plentiful. It was November 3rd, 1981, and a 16-year-old boy named Anthony Broussard raped and murdered 14-year-old Marcy Conrad. Mm -hmm. The two were friends who hung out in a group known as the Stoners. Um, One day, Broussard invited Conrad to his house she allegedly said something to upset him he strangled her and raped her corpse he then drove her up to the foothills that line the east edge of milpitas and dumped her body and as if that wasn't bad enough he took as many as 17 of his classmates up to see the body some poked at her with sticks some stared some claimed that it was a mannequin and one covered her up with nearby plants oh my god after two days two of the students couldn't handle keeping the secret one told the principal and one went to the police both of those students were treated like outcasts after telling (laughs) their peers thought they broke some stupid secret code of being a cool teenager The murder shined a spotlight on a normally sleepy town. No one could understand how so many people could have known and not said anything for so long. It sparked a nationwide discussion about how disaffected suburban youth had become. Today, Milpitas is great if you love terrible drivers, nerdy engineers, the smell of landfill, and paying $1.2 million for a three-bedroom town. Oh, my God. (laughs) I grew up here and married my high school sweetheart 15 years after high school. Our parents, aunts, and uncles all went to school together and the youngest of them went to high school at the time they all have different stories of how it affected them i don't really know what is true and what is bullshit (laughs) hey none of us do no No matter how lame milpitas is we can always claim that keanu reeves crispin glover and his weirdly tiny forehead and the hey careful (laughs) and the legendary dennis hopper were in a movie loosely based on our hood broussard pled guilty to the crime and was sentenced to 25 years to life as of april 2019 he's still in Folsom prison He's been denied parole several times. SSDGM Amanda. Wow. I didn't we know. We haven't done that one yet. I know. I did not know it was from Milpitas. Yeah, that's right by where you're from, right? Yeah, I believe uh, it's either it's either East Bay or South Bay. Yeah. Sorry. Those of us in the North Bay don't really know what's going on in either <laughs> of those two places. But she said nerdy engineers, which makes me think yeah. closer to Silicon Valley. Yeah. But, um, but I remember seeing that movie and being so disturbed by the totally. idea that like kid after kid, there was no kid with the conscience going, what the fuck are any of you doing? Yeah. And it re- yeah, it's a fucked up movie. Yeah. But it's great. Okay. This one is called Escaped Canadian Serial Killer Alan Legere Signed My Poppy's Outhouse. Is it Legere? Do you know Alan? I don't. Okay. I'm going to say it's Legere. Okay. The end. Hi from New Brunswick, East Coast, Canada. <laughs> Why did you give it that voice? I don't know. <laughs> like, kind of a rebel. Hi from New Brunswick, East Coast, Canada. Yeah. Alan Legere, also known as the Monster of Marishi, was an active rapist serial killer in New Brunswick in the 80s. After going down for his first murder, he managed to escape jail, and how he did it is insane. He first gave himself an ear infection by peeing on his pillow constantly in jail, <laughs> uh-huh, and got himself a trip to the hospital. He managed to break off the TV antenna in the hospital and hide it up his butt. Uh, Then, after... So I would hope, like, it's retracted. Gotta hope. Okay. Then, after using it to pick his handcuffs when the guards weren't watching, he used the shit antenna as a weapon (laughs) and just ran past them to escape. Jesus. 
Then begins his seven-month run from the cops while living in the woods, off the land, or in people's camps in rural New Brunswick, while also being on a maid of nightmares killing spree. Oh, shit. My poppy's hunting camp was in a nearby village way back in the woods. The rumor was that Alan Legere was hopping from camp to camp using people's facilities to survive and hide, which would work great there because most people only really use the camps for a short time during the hunting season. My dad recently told me about Alan Legere and said that Pop went to the camp one fall in 1989 and noticed it said Al Legere written on the outhouse wall as if he had left his signature. Oh. Now, it is very realistic that Pop wrote that himself as a hilarious prank (laughs) because he was hilarious and what serial killer on the run is going to leave his signature behind. But it's also realistic that he could have hidden out in Poppy's camp using the same beds that we've slept on and sat in the same outhouse. Pop has since passed away, so I can't confirm whether it was a prank. But I'd like to think that since he didn't fess up to it after almost 30 years, that it was a true story. Mm. Because I guess I'm a weirdo who wants a serial killer to have shat in the same outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, eventually this monster got caught and is currently serving a life sentence in prison. Beth. P.S. We'd love to have you on the east coast of Canada, please. Like somewhere around New Brunswick? Like, for example, New Brunswick. (laughs) Is it New Brunswick? Yes. Yes. New Brunswick. New Brunswick. Sounds good. Great. We'll be there tomorrow. Thanks so much, Beth. (laughs) Thanks for the invitation. That's all we were waiting for. Okay. The subject line of this email is murderer, wedding DJ, and a bonus Three Mile Island story. Ooh. Dear Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and the gang. (laughs) Huge fan. Loved the Philly show. Sorry for the Arctic conditions. And I've been wanting to write forever. I grew up in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, where in 1992, the year before I went to kindergarten, a sixth grade teacher from my school mysteriously did not show up for work one morning. The principal decided to go to her apartment to see if she was okay. I know. Just call the cops, man. He found her door was unlocked and that she had been brutally raped and murdered. The case went cold for as long as I can remember. There were signs around the county with her picture asking if anyone knew who killed Christy Mirak. Fast forward to 2018. Thanks to Ancestry DNA and similar sleuthing that caught the Golden State Killer, Lancaster law enforcement arrested a suspect after lifting DNA from a water bottle he disposed of at a gig at an elementary school assembly. Mm. In parentheses, horrifying. The culprit was a popular local DJ, DJ Freeze. I've been reading all about this one. Are are you for real? I've never heard of it. I gasped when I heard, realizing that he had been our on our list of top recommended vendors when we were picking our wedding DJ just a couple <gasps> months before. Oh my god! We almost hired a murderer. An episode of tw- it, it says here an episode of twenty four featuring our old principal, but I think that's <laughs> a confusion because twenty twenty. Yes, I think that's probably forty eight hours. Of. Some other number. It's a number show, but I I bet it's not an episode of twenty four. I bet you're right. Unless the president is involved <laughs> dennis haysbert um an episode of 24 featuring our old principal and b-roll shot at our wedding venue followed shortly after the arrest wow. it was also a hot topic of conversation at our family christmas gathering then in january dj freeze confessed that scumbag had been walking around for 27 <sighs> years living his life without repercussions for what he did infuriating luckily he's behind bars now As a bonus, you talked about the Three Mile Island disaster last week. That happened over my parents' wedding weekend. They got married in Lancaster (laughs) City, which was just outside the 10-mile radius. Oh, my God. Just outside it. Unfortunately, this meant a few guests canceled at the last minute. (laughs) Fortunately, because so many people evacuated the area, my folks got upgraded to a bigger, better room at their venue. (laughs) (laughs) But you got to look on the bright side, people. That's that's what they say. Really? I might have 12 toes, but... um, (laughs) Uh, Three Mile Island didn't destroy their wedding and they just celebrated 40 years of marriage this past weekend. Cute. Stay sexy and don't hire a murdering DJ for your wedding. E. Their love is atomic. Yes. I've been following this cold case. It was a cold case I've been following since he got caught because we still haven't figured out how they knew each other. But now that she says that he was DJing elementary schools and she was an elementary school teacher, they he, yes. And this woman, you just see her photo, and she's just this sweet baby angel. It's so awful. And I can't believe it took that long to find him, and I'm so glad they did. Yeah. Because he totally looks like a normal a normal DJ. I mean, <laughs> what is that? He looks like the most average DJ. <laughs> you know. Headphones. All right. <laughs> 
With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Craft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Go by. Here's my last one. Okay. Munchausen by proxy, lighthearted. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Karen, Georgia, and associates, especially Elvis and George. Longtime listener, first time emailer here. I finally have a story to tell you. You didn't ask, but I'm sure you'd want to know. I've known about Munchausen by proxy since the Phil Donahue days. Yeah. But then she insults us by saying, You girls are both too young to remember this pre Oprah gem. I'm are you sorry. high? Are you crazy? I watched that as a child and loved Phil Donahue. That's a, that was what I did after school. Yeah, yeah. Muppet Babies, Phil Donahue. Boy um, George was on there. Remember when the world went crazy? They were like, "Who, who is this person? Yeah. And why is he dressed this way?" And then is he boy a boy George or like, a girl? Boy George is like, "Look, I'm just here to be to bring my music and have a great time." <laughs> and by the end, everyone's like, "We love it. It's the best." <laughs> um. But it wasn't until I watched the Mommy Dead and Dearest documentary that it actually dawned on me that a form of Munchausen had happened to me as a child. I guess denial really is the strongest of human emotions. (laughs) My father was a police officer for 35 years and apparently had a hero complex with a sight of Munchausen by proxy. He was also a prolific secret smoker. He, according to my mom, smoked two packs a day, but on the sly. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, How? It says, did I mention that my family of origin had issues? Lol. Don't worry. I survived and have lots of therapy. (laughs) I grew up in the 70s. Unbelievably, people smoked cigarettes everywhere back then. Yes. The car, at home, restaurants, the mall, and even at work. The bank, Uh, gas stations. (laughs) Like constantly, uh, it's it was everywhere, and no one paid it. No one knew the difference. Yeah, I not surprisingly had asthma. <laughs> <laughs> In addition, I was and still am allergic to cigarettes. Deathly allergic. Combine this allergy with dad's hero complex slash Munchausen by proxy plus his serendipitous smoking, and what happens? Him on a repeated basis carrying me out to the squad car and mostly rushing me to the ER while my fingers turned blue and finally a shot of F. Uh, epinephrine 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 i would come sputtering back to life and guess who was the hero and getting all of the attention for my near-death experience dear old dad oh what they didn't know is that he would get off his shift at 2 a.m smoke in the basement next to the forced air furnace (laughs) and wait (laughs) oh on purpose yeah i would wake up gasping for breath and trying to cough whereupon he would swing into action and turn into a hero Ew, no. Then she writes, how on earth is this lighthearted, you may ask? (laughs) (laughs) Well, number one, medication has vastly improved and I have inhalers and a nebulizer. Two, I'm still allergic to cigarettes, but we now have clean air laws. Mm. And three, dad died from COPD. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, this is a low blow, but I think after all those emergency rooms trips that I earned the right to have grim and inappropriate humor. Sure. You see, back then, the family doctor said I wouldn't make it past 20. Yes, they said stuff like that back then in front of the kid, even. (laughs) And here I am, still breathing well and enjoying my best life over 50. Ha! Thanks for your jocularity in the face of evil. It gives us back our power, Mary. Wow. Isn't that bananas? That is... You don't hear it. uh, uh, I haven't heard it, I should say. Of men having that's it. That's true. You, you rarely hear that. I mean, you got to wonder how many cases are out there that 
nobody knows about because they were doing stuff like that. Yes. Where it's just, you'll where, never find out. And and I think, like, men being given the benefit of the doubt. Right. And um, he's a cop, too. He's a cop. You just so rarely go, oh, my God, he's crazy. Yeah. You know, in that, in that way of, like, behaviorally based. Yeah. Going... It would never be suspicious. It'd yeah. just be like, oh, he's done it again. Isn't I that mean, great? It's just so sad and awful. And I just feel for her that her, you know, you have to grapple with that feeling that your dad was doing something like that. And the fact that she's, she's she lighthearted. She grapple and, with it. Yeah. Because she's basically saying that's his thing. Yeah. It was his thing and she survived it and she's fine. She's impressive. Yeah. That's an amazing that's story. I didn't want to end with that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So let's end with this one. Okay. Um, this says college self-defense. Okay lighthearted okay hey mfm crew love the show blah 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 <laughs> i'm a public librarian in buffalo new york which means i've seen and heard some crazy shit like the parking lot fight i've broken up <laughs> <laughs> like oh, i like librarian. jane austen i like emily bronte well let's go fight in the parking lot <laughs> or the guy who od'd on heroin in our bathroom or the co-worker who told me that her abusive ex-husband was briefly a suspect in Buffalo's famous bike path rapist case. Shit. He wasn't the guy, but he was a real asshole. <laughs> anyway, that has nothing to do with this. When I was in grad school, there was a period where there were a ton of sexual assaults and muggings on campus. Around 10.30 one night after class, my classmate and I walked out of the building together, but I forgot a notebook and had to run back to the classroom, so we said our goodbyes. Uh -huh. Don't do it. I got the notebook and walked back outside to make the long walk to catch the bus when two hands grabbed my <gasps> shoulders from behind. Without thinking, I stomped on the arch of the guy's foot and elbowed him in the face. Yes. And the guy yelled, fuck Jill. <laughs> it was my classmate who I initially walked out with. He thought it would be hilarious oh, to give me a little scare. Deserved it. The next day, his girlfriend asked why he had a fat lip and a bruise on his face. He told her the story and she told him he deserved oh. it. Hell yeah, Brian's girlfriend. <laughs> Stay sexy and don't go to grad school, Jill. <laughs> Stay sexy and don't. That's the moral of the story. Yeah. yeah. Just avoid all of that. I do think that there is this thing, you know, like, yeah, that person, you get to fight back if someone scares you. And it doesn't matter if it's if someone playing a joke on you. They no, no. fucking deserve it. Well, the people that play jokes and pranks like right. that have to understand that it's not a joke or a prank to the person before they find out it's you doing it. Yeah. And so in that span of time, whether it's two seconds or five minutes, they're going to do whatever they feel like doing to you. You know who wouldn't play a prank like that because they understand what it means when someone jumps out at you and puts their hands on you? Another woman. So if a guy's yes. doing that, it's because he doesn't understand how scary it is. Just just to walk at night as a woman. Yeah, or it's just not thinking it all the way through. Right. Of like, here's a funny, here's yeah. a funny joke. Well, it's like, well, now, now you know from this day forward, yeah. it's not a funny well, joke. Now we have to get pepper spray out of your eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. Um, can we get more librarian uh, stories, please? Oh man, if you've got, if you are a librarian of any kind, and yeah. you have scary, upsetting, wonderful, hilarious, thrilling, or whatever library stories, yes. we want to hear them. A hundred percent. Please, we know you guys see the shit. Yeah, uh, my favorite murder at Gmail, or you can go to our new website and do it directly from there. Do it directly from there. Do Why it, not? Do it. Why go not? To, because it's a brand new website. It's been rebuilt. It's so beautiful. It We're so excited about it. Also, the fan cult is new, so yeah. you might want to, if you've been kicking around the idea of joining the fan cult, there's lots of great reasons to join now. That's right. www.my <laughs> My favorite murder dot gov. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sending in your stories. And stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mimi, want a cookie? <laughs>